Hello everyone. So today we're going to be talking about maximizing an integral, right? Finding the maximum of an integral. Now, this might seem as a pretty tough problem and you can do a lot of things with this, but really at the core of it, it's just a very basic problem, a very simple, elegant problem. And it's, you can call it motivation is, has been derived from something that all of you have studied somewhere or the other, either in like middle school or in early high school. So yeah, let's see how that goes. So this is the problem number B5 from the Putnam exam in 2006. And in this video, we're going to be talking about maximizing an integral. Uh, then we're going to be talking about the method of completing the square, you know, in quadratics, you know, maximizing a quadratic and completing the square. And then we relate that to integrals. So like I was saying, even though this is the second last problem of the Putnam exam, the motivation for it has been derived from a very fundamental concept in algebra, right? And then they related that to calculus. So it's going to be quite interesting, actually. And after that, we have some book sessions for college mathematics and at the end, a similar but challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so let's see what they've given. So they've told us for each continuous function, f, defined from zero to one, that's the input values, and the output is real numbers. Let i of f be defined as this integral, and j of f be defined as this other integral, right? So find the maximum value of i f minus j f for all such maybe functions um, f, right? So what do we exactly need to maximize? So we need to maximize we need to maximize i of f minus j of f, right? And let me just call it that value as, let's say, capital K. Whatever this K is, you need to maximize K, right? So K is essentially equal to the integral of zero to one of i of f minus j of f, right? So that's nothing but x square f of x minus x times f of f x whole square dx. Which is pretty much just this. Now, let me like, make some observation over here. Right. Let me like make some observation over here. So the observation is that f of x minus x by two whole squared. What is this? Right. This is nothing but f of x whole squared plus x squared by four minus x times f of x. If you actually see, this is quite similar to what we have over here, with the exception that we need an x over here. Right, so essentially, I'll multiply this entire thing by x. So I'll get something similar. x times f of x whole square, that's over here. x squared times f of x, that's over here. So basically, x squared times f of x minus x times f of x whole squared will be equal to x cubed by 4 minus x times f of x minus x by 2 whole squared. So I think that's a pretty interesting thing to note. And where did the motivation for this rise from? Like you might say that this is very abstract, right? You can just, you just pick something abstract, f of x minus x by 2 whole squared that and got this. Well, the idea is like, it's quite interesting actually. Here you see some certain squared terms, right? Certain squared terms over here, certain squared terms over here. So initially what my, what my initial approach was maybe to use some inequality to solve this because, you know, inequality is also another way to find out the maxima. Maybe try Cauchy Schwartz or maybe something else. But that didn't really work and I found this more elegant solution. So I just, just kind of observe that this thing whole squared gives us a configuration that is something similar to this. And when you multiply it by x, you actually get the exact same terms, almost the exact same terms, like more or less similar. I guess this configuration which I need in the question as well, which is equal to this. And again, once you kind of get this idea, it's also good to know that this is kind of related to completing the square that you might have studied in algebra. So for example, if I maybe have the equation f of x is equal to negative x square minus 6x plus 3. And I asked you to maybe find maxima of f of x. So one way is obviously to use calculus, use derivative. The other way is called as completing the square. Now, this is a quadratic expression with leading coefficient negative, right? It's a is equal to minus one, where a is the leading coefficient. So it's like a downward opening parabola. So it will have a maximum value. 
If A was positive, it would be an upward opening parabola and hence it would have a minima. But okay, anyways, so the way to find this kind of maxima because it's a downward opening parabola is we have to like complete the square, right? So what is f of x? f of x is negative of x square minus 6x plus 3. And how do you complete the square? Well, you look at the middle term, which is 6. You divide by 2, you get 3. And then you square it up, you'll get 9. So you add 9 and subtract 9. Okay? So there's negative x square minus 6x. Add 9 and subtract 9. As simple as that. So you'll get f of x as negative of x square minus 6x plus 9 is x plus 3 whole squared. And this becomes minus 9 plus 3 is negative 6. So f of x essentially becomes 6 minus x plus 3 whole squared. Now you notice that this is going to be a squared term. So this is always going to be positive and you are always going to be subtracting a positive quantity from 6. So the value is obviously going to be less than 6 until and unless this thing is 0. Until and unless x plus 3 whole squared is 0, which is implies that x equals to minus 3. So therefore, maxima of f of x is 6 at x equals to minus 3. Right, so we got that. So this is kind of like a similar idea over here. This is what we had, so the idea that I was referring to earlier was quite elementary, right? That this idea, this completing this when finding the maximum of a quadratic, this is something that we've studied before. And that, believe it or not, actually relates to the question. So, like I was saying before, x square f of x minus x and f of x whole square dx is this quantity, and this is equal to this quantity from, from the, the observation that we just, that we just made. So if I just plug in the value of this into our original integral, let's see what we get. We will get the integral of 0 to 1 times x cubed by 4 minus x times f of x minus x by 2 whole squared dx. Now, if you actually notice in the question, it is given that x is from 0 to 1, right? Essentially, x is always positive. Okay, that's great. X is always positive and this is a squared term. So you're always subtracting a positive quantity. A squared term is always positive. And secondly, you're multiplying that by another positive quantity. So you're always going to be subtracting something from X cubed minus 4. So it's obviously going to reduce the value of this, right? We need to maximize this. We need to maximize this, right? But, but, but until and unless this thing is zero, until unless this thing is zero, what will happen is that you will always, always, always subtract something from x cubed by 4, which will reduce the value. It will not be maximized. So therefore, maxima is achieved at f of x equals x by 2. Because essentially, at this point, f of x minus x by 2 whole square would be zero, right? So f of x equal to x by 2. So this quantity would be zero. So therefore, the maxima would be nothing but the integral from 0 to 1 of the remaining portion x cubed by 4 dx. And this is obviously just like simple, which is 1 by 16, x is power 4 from 0 to 1, which is 1 by 16. And that's the answer actually, right? So therefore, maxima is achieved. Maxima is uh, 1 by 16 at f of x equals x by 2. And I can actually put this value of x by 2 back in the original integral and then actually see that this actually holds true. So this is a pretty nice problem, right? The idea for that was from maybe like completing the square, right? Squaring certain quantities. And I think the most important step was this one, right? Kind of like noticing the square kind of a thing. And obviously its motivation comes from something called squaring the, completing the square. It's right? something that we've studied in quadratic expressions. So yes, I really hope you learned something interesting from that. And yes, it's a good thing to keep in mind that it may seem like a very daunting problem. It may seem like very complicated, you know, B5, Patnam or whatever. But at the core of it, it might actually just be something simple and something that may completely skip your mind. Right? So that's a good thing to remember. Okay, so moving on, we have certain book sessions for college mathematics, introduction to real analysis, principles of mathematical analysis, calculus volume one and volume two by Apostle, topology, contemporary abstract algebra, Topics in Algebra, Abstract Algebra, and Linear Algebra done right by Axla. Okay, so this is a similar but challenging problem. And I wanted to find A comma B so that this given integral is maximized. So yeah, maybe I'll go at that. And if you're able to solve it, let me know in the comment section. And um, until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Okay. The programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics.
and they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit chinta.com.